Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today we have the honor of welcoming Mr. Neil Gibson, the Vice President of Corporate Communications at FedEx. He is responsible for reputation management, social media, media relations, crisis management, and corporate citizenship. Before his time at FedEx, Mr. Gibson served as a captain of the United States Air Force, where he was responsible for evaluation of new weapons and communication systems. The communication skills that he obtained during his time at the military have greatly helped him in his current role at FedEx. As you will see, ethics and corporate responsibility are especially important to FedEx. And Mr. Gibson's leadership, um, through Mr. Gibson's leadership, FedEx has been able to outperform their competitors and consistently um, communicate that message. FedEx was ranked as Fortune's 2016, one of the world's best um, companies to work for and one of the world's most admired companies. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Neil Gibson. Thanks, Evie. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I wasn't sure who she was talking about when she was reading that bio. I was like, oh, she's talking about me. Um, so I appreciate the kind introduction. Thanks, Evie. And thank you for allowing me to come visit this beautiful campus. I came in late last night. I got a chance to go to shenanigans. I didn't see many of you at shenanigans last night. I was the only one at the bar last night. I had the Grubin, which I never knew a blackened grouper in a Reuben sandwich existed. It was one of the best things I've ever put in my mouth. It was delicious. Um, they had to kick me out of uh, shenanigans last night. Not a lot of people there for Valentine's Day. It was pretty dead. Um, but it seems like that's the only place that's open uh, downtown late at night in Dahlonega, so I learned my lesson uh, from that. Um, so thanks again for having me, and I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the speaker series. I think the speaker series, Ruben, has gone back to 2009, and to be able to be a part of uh, organizations like Coke and Twitter and, and others to be able to come present, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the company. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've learned along my journey. And the first thing that I will tell you is that the job that I am in today isn't the job I ever thought I was going to be in. I never thought I would join FedEx. I never thought I'd be a part of corporate communications. Um, this is not the path that I had set for myself when I was sitting where you are back when I was at school. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I got to where I am and some of the things that I've learned. And hopefully you'll walk away from this discussion today with maybe a couple tidbits that will be able to help you. Um, but first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. And I'm going to start with the picture that's in the middle. I want to tell you a little bit about my family because one of my key values is my family. And we're going to talk about values a little bit later. But, but when you look in the middle, that's my beautiful bride, Lisa. Uh, we met at FedEx. Uh, I always I joke we met on a project together and the project was successful in many many ways. Um, uh, her her daughter, my stepdaughter Shana, here to the left. Um, she's at Ole Miss. She's going to graduate with her law degree in May. Um, she's got a job when she graduates. She's going to graduate, and we know she's going to pass the bar. So we're really excited about that. And then that's my son Seth. He's 12. He's in seventh grade. And he loves to dance. We were just in New Orleans this past weekend for a dance convention. Uh, my wife was really, really excited because he got to take class from Twitch. Does anybody know who Twitch is? So, thank you. Uh, and I think my wife was more excited to get her picture taken with Twitch than my son actually getting a chance to dance with him. But So that's my family, and that's an important piece of who I am. I wanted to share that. But let me go back to my, my history and how I ended up where I am and where I didn't think up this is where I was going to be. I grew up in Maryland, and I remember in 1986, there was a movie that came out that was called Top Gun. Anybody seen Top Gun? I came out of that movie and said, I want to be a naval aviator. I want to fly jets. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to be Goose. Now, Goose dies in the movie, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it. So I certainly didn't want to end up how he ended up in the movie, but I wanted to fly jets. I wanted to be an aviator. So from that, I set off on a mission to get into the military. So I looked to, I applied to West Point, I applied to Naval Academy, I applied to the Air Force Academy, was able to get into the Air Force Academy. I spent a couple weekends at West Point at the Naval Academy and decided that life was not for me and I was going to go to the ROT, Air Force ROTC route. And I went to Clemson University, 2016 national champions. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. I'm a little proud of that, especially because we have Deshaun Watson just down the street from Gainesville 
uh, who was our amazing quarterback who I got to meet a couple weeks ago. I could spend the whole presentation talking about Clemson, but I know you guys didn't come here to hear about that. Uh, but very proud Clemson graduate, went Air Force ROTC route. I had a navigator slot while I was at Clemson. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. I'm going to be a navigator. Once I get a navigator, I can get to that pilot slot. I'm going to be flying planes. That's my dream. That's what I'm going to do. We we're winding down from Desert Storm, um, and we were starting to reduce the force within the Air Force. And I went in to go get an eye test, and my left eye failed one of the tests by 0 0.05. The guy who's giving me the test said, don't worry. You can get a waiver. You'll be able to keep it. And I said, great. I'll get my waiver. Came back. Two weeks later, I got a note from the Air Force. My navigator slot got rescinded. In the matter of one letter, there went everything that I had worked for to get into the Air Force to be a navigator. I didn't know what I was going to do. So I ended up uh, graduating at, with a math degree, and I went in as a weapons analyst. So I thought, if I can't fly, then maybe I'll stay close enough to be able to work with the groups that are delivering weapons or working with an aircraft. So I went as a weapons analyst. But really, my job when I was in the military was scientist mathematician. How boring is that job title? Because I had a math degree, that's the job they assigned me, but I like to tell people I was a weapons analyst, that's a lot sexier. So I went in as a weapons analyst and I spent six years doing that, but at the six year point, I realized that if I wanted to continue my career, I was going to have to do something different and I tried to change to go into aircraft maintenance. So to get even closer to the aircraft and the Air Force said, no, we can't let you do that, we need you to stay where you are. And I knew if I stayed where I was, I wasn't going to be able to get promoted and I was going to have to leave the military in like 10 or 12 years and it's not what I wanted to do. So I decided to get out, which again, my dream was to serve 20 years in the military. So I've lost the nav slot. Now I've gotten into the military, enjoyed my time, but my path is changing. And I decided to go to FedEx and I got the job and I went to FedEx in 1999. And when I got to FedEx, I started in the information technology group. I was an IT. I was a senior business applications analyst. I don't know what that means, but that was the job title that I had. Through a course of different uh, reorganizations, I went from IT to digital marketing to international marketing to communications. Again, not the path that I thought that I was, that was going to take. But I believe now that I'm in my dream job at FedEx. But I didn't know this was the job that was for me. Why I think it's one of my dream jobs is I had an opportunity in September to fly George W. Bush from Colorado Springs to Dallas and to be his escort. And I got to spend two hours on the plane with him, knee to knee, talking to him about his history, his life experiences, and just talking to a man who has led this great country. I would not have had an opportunity to be with President Bush had it not been for the job that I'm in today. So that's why I wanted to highlight that picture from a part of my career. And this is my team uh, on this picture here. We're on a wing of a DC-10. This was a plane that we donated to Orbis. Orbis is an organization that is dedicated to eradicating blindness across the world. 80% of blindness around the world is preventable. This flying eye hospital flies into countries and areas within the world where they don't have eye care, and we bring the doctors to them to be able to help. And it's a part of uh, FedEx's commitment um, to our communities, and that's us on the wing of that plane. So that's a little bit about who I am, where I've come from, and the path that I've taken. What I'd like to now pivot to is talk to you a little bit about FedEx. And I think in this day and age, folks don't really understand the scope and scale that FedEx um, has across the world. Due to our recent acquisition of TNT, we're now almost a half a million team members around the world. And we connect 220 different countries and territories, which represents about 99% of the world's GDP. What you are used to receiving overnight or being shipped to you in two days, we're connecting the world in one to two business days. It's a pretty massive organization. And when you look at the numbers, you've already seen here some of the team member numbers, around 500,000 team members. We have over 4,800 operating facilities across the world. And with that uh, state-of-the-art technology, we deliver 12 million shipments a day. This past December, in the midst of peak, we doubled that on a, almost on a daily basis, delivering 20 to 25 million shipments a day. We have 150,000 vehicles on the road on a daily basis, and every second of every day, there's a FedEx airplane in the air somewhere around the world, 650 aircraft. We are the world's largest cargo airline. 
and a yearly basis, we will cover 5.6 billion miles are covered uh, each year, and we service 220 different countries and territories. It's a significant organization with a global reach and one that we're extremely proud of because our founder and CEO, Fred Smith, he created an industry. Back in 1973, there was no such thing as overnight delivery. And how the company was started, he looked at the need to be able to deliver Federal Reserve checks. So back at the time, I know we don't write checks today, or if we do, we get really annoyed in the grocery line if somebody's writing a check in front of us. But back in the day, that's how we moved money around this country was checks. He devised a system to be able to move checks around from different Federal Reserve banks, as well as there was an increase in automation at the time. Think about ATMs. Uh, and computers, he knew we were going to have to move parts and get things there overnight to be able to help with the advance of technology and automation. That's where Federal Express comes from. Um, really, tidbit about the naming of the company. When he went to name the company, he first thought he wanted to name it American Express. Well, that was already taken. That was the credit card company. He wanted then, he thought about, what about National Express? Well, National, I think there was also an airline at that time that had the word national. But then when he started thinking about the Federal Reserve, federal government, there would be a lot of work with that. That's where Federal Express came from is the origin of the name. But just as um, you know, the, the importance of the business and what we're doing to connect the world economy is just as import, is important, what's more important is how we give back to the communities where we live and work. So you hear a part of the uh, Mike Cottrell uh, business school, he has a strong desire to be able to give back. He's given back to University of North Georgia. He's given back significantly here uh, to North Georgia and to Dahlonega. Fred Smith has the same belief as well, that the importance, your legacy is built on how you give back and what you do for others. I think if you remember from what Dr. Martin Luther King said, he said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing to help others? And that's something we take very seriously at FedEx on how we're giving back. So I've got a video that I want to share to you that talks about our FedEx Cares initiative, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, they've asked me to do the switch in terms of the video. So if I can't do this, I'm asking Nick to come up and help me. But he's, I think he's trained me to be able to do it. Well, didn't go, Nick. Now this is the part where Nick's going to come up and help fix this because I've obviously touched this and made something uh, break. Um, so while he's bringing up the video, I'll set this up just a little bit. So FedEx has been giving back to our, our communities where we live and work since we started um, almost 44 years ago. But what we did three years ago is we decided to take a look at what are the things that FedEx does really well. And we are really good at logistics and transportation and supply chain. What are the needs of the societies, uh, of the areas where we live and work? What are the challenges that they're facing? And where those two things intersect, that's where we can make the greatest impact. And so we then launched our FedEx Cares initiative, which this video is going to highlight if I've given enough tap dancing for your set. Thanks, Nick, for your help if you can bring us back to the slide. So we launched this initiative during Super Bowl 50 um, in San Francisco. We had Eli Manning as a part of our, our launch. 
and we came out with this FedEx Cares initiative, $200 million to 200 global communities by 2020. And we outlined our strategy into these five key investment areas. And these are areas that we know we do extremely well, but we also know that there are needs of society that, that we can be able to help out. So global entrepreneurship, how do, we, how do we help underserved populations start businesses and be successful? When we look at sustainable transportation, I talked to you about the number of vehicles and, and jets that we have um, in our fleet. We need to continue to work to make sure that we've got clean vehicles, we're using hybrid fuels, we're bringing the most fuel efficient aircraft into the network, and how we also are helping other countries like Mexico, Brazil, and China build infrastructures where they are able to move people and goods efficiently and help reduce emissions and smog. Employment pathways, how are we helping underserved populations, specifically in the age groups of 16 to 24, find employment, find training, and find jobs. Road safety. I said we had 150,000 vehicles on the road every day. Child pedestrian safety is a key focus area for the company. And then finally, delivering for good. The picture that you see here are relief supplies that were being put on this 777 that were being flown to Nepal. It actually went to Dubai, and then we did two turns into Kathmandu. I was there that day as we were loading um, almost $30 million worth of aid shipping to Nepal, and we were the first American country or excuse me, American agency, government or corporation to actually land in Nepal and deliver aid. We got there before the military did. Something that we pride ourselves on as an organization. When the call is made, we answer the call to be able to help out those in need. So that's a little bit about um, FedEx Cares. We've got something at the end of this um, uh, discussion, a little FedEx Cares giveaway for you to be able to take back. So that's a little bit about the company, about who we are and what our initiatives are when it comes to FedEx Cares. And that's a lot what sits within my role within corporate communications. Evie talked about that in terms of my bio. You know, my team is responsible for media relations. So how is FedEx being perceived in the media? How do we work with eight, uh, groups like the Wall Street Journal, the USA Today, Bloomberg, Financial Times, The Economist, um, and how we tell our story th through the media? We also have crisis communications, and crisis communications, so one of the bad things happen. So when you have so many vehicles on the road and planes in the air, unfortunately, sometimes bad things happen, and how do we be able to manage that um, through the media and things that are happening? Then on the citizenship side, my team manages our FedEx Cares program and all our philanthropic giving. So we get the opportunity to work with organizations like Orbis that I mentioned before, the American Red Cross or Direct Relief, Heart to Heart International, First Robotics, lots of different organizations. And that is probably the most fun part of my job is the opportunity to be able to work with these organizations and be able to give back. And then finally, I have a team who's responsible for social media, all of our eight social media properties. I rely so heavily on that team to keep me hip and up to speed when it comes to social media. Of course, I also rely on my son to teach me a little bit about Snapchat because I asked him if he was on Facebook and he just rolled his eyes and said, you don't know what you're talking about, Dad. He helps me on the Snapchat side. Um, so within all those teams, we're helping to manage the brand and reputation of the company and how we're engaging our consumers and new customers to help them understand what we're about and what FedEx can do for them, for their business as a consumer, a small to medium business, or a large business. So does that help give you some perspective about FedEx? Any questions about that so far? You guys good? All right. So the next part of the presentation, oh, and this other last slide, um, these are just some of the accolades that FedEx has received over the years. Fortune's most admired, uh, one of the 40 best companies for diversity as, as recognized by Black Enterprise. Uh, we're one of the world's most valuable brands. We're one of the uh, 100 best corporate citizens, and the Reputation Institute has us on their top 100. So a pretty reputable company to work for and one that I'm very proud um, to be a part of. So the next two slides um, are now to talk a little bit about what I have picked up throughout my journey, whether it's been in the Air Force or here at FedEx, excuse me, when it comes to leadership and some guiding principles. And I'll relay some of these things and when it pertains to my uh, particular path. One of the things that I think is very important for each and every one of you to understand and to think about as you go into, whether it's into the military or the corporate world, start your own business or going back to school, 
I think you need to understand what is your leadership style, what's your leadership vision, what's your leadership philosophy. And it is something that is unique to you as an individual, and it is one that you are going to continue to grow and develop throughout your, um, your career. For me, my leadership style is reflected in a book called The Leadership Challenge um, by Kuzes and Posner. I think they're on like their 11th or 12th edition. And in that leadership challenge, um, the way that they model leadership to me is what speaks well to me. You know, talking about modeling the way, being the example, how you lead others, how do you inspire a shared vision and get people excited and rally about what you want to try and to be able to accomplish? How do you challenge the process? How do you continuously ask the question, well, why do we do it that way? Is there a better way to do it? How do you enable others to act? How do you bring out the best in your team? How do you empower them to do the great work and the great things that they're able to do? And then how do you encourage the heart? How do you recognize and appreciate those who are surrounding you and working with you on a daily basis? I would encourage you as a homework assignment, not that I can hold you accountable for it, and there's certainly not going to be a quiz at the end of this, um, but to go back and think about how do you lead? What is your leadership vision and your style? What does that accomplish and what makes that unique for you? I think as you go out into the business world, for you to be able to articulate that is going to be important. And I think leadership is about relationships and it's about what you do and it's about the credibility that you have with others. I see a lot of people who just are craving for the title. I want the manager title, I want the director title, I want the senior title because I'm going to get the respect because I have this certain title, then people are going to follow me. People can lead from any organization in any seat in any place. It's not about the title. It's about the relationships, the credibility, and about what you do. And it's about leading by um, example. I have learned in my time at the military, and I've also learned at my time at FedEx, that organizations appreciate people who are go-getters, who are action-oriented, who want to make an impact, and are going to be decisive. So I would encourage you to be act with urgency. Move with purpose, make an impact, and be decisive. I tell my team on a daily basis, I would rather us make a decision and go down a path, and if that path doesn't work out, then let's make a different decision and go do something different. But this analysis paralysis and ways that large organizations and bureaucracy have a tendency to just mull over things, it takes too long to react. And in this day and age, and the way things are moving so quickly, especially within digital media, you have to make decisions quickly. You need to act. Um, you need to learn from them. You need to continue to move forward. And the other thing I want to talk to you about quickly about leadership, and I think it's a, I don't want to necessarily say a trend, but I think it's something that's coming back to be in vogue within business, is the importance that culture plays within an organization. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Peter Drucker, uh, the management uh, guru, but he has a great quote that says, culture will eat strategy for breakfast. So you can come up with just the most amazing business strategy that's going to propel your organization to hit double-digit growth or whatever your goals are, but if you don't have the right culture in place, if you don't have the right work environment in place, that strategy is not going to be successful. That culture will disintegrate and destroy any vision and strategy to try to put into place. At FedEx, we have a very specific culture, and it's something that attracted me to come work there from my time in the military to join FedEx. Because Mr. Smith was a Marine captain, had two tours in Vietnam, he very much set up FedEx to have a little bit of a military background, a military feel to it. That attracted me to that. The culture that we have at FedEx is something called PSP, or People Service Profit. And it's really simple, uh, but it's really powerful. Mr. Smith said that if you take care of your people, they will deliver outstanding service. When we deliver outstanding service, our customers will reward us with business and profits, which we then take the profits and reinvest back into our people. And all of our decisions as a company is made with that PSP culture in mind. You need to think about when you're going out to start either your business, what is the culture that you want to set up, or when you go join organizations, what's the culture that I'm being a part of? And does that match who I am? So I think this aspect of culture is going to continue to come out within the business world and is something that you need to be thinking about as you take on that next step. Any questions about that? Do we have time for questions at the end? We do? Thanks, Bobby. Any questions so far? 
Is this thing on in the back? Can you hear me? Okay, good. I got a chuckle in the back. I appreciate the gentleman in the blue shirt with the nod. Thank you. Um, and so the next piece I wanted to cover off on are what I call my guiding principles. And these are things that I have learned um, over my career so far that I wanted to pass along to you, and I hope that they are helpful. Um, and so first and foremost, I talked about this in the beginning. I talked to you and I shared at the beginning of the presentation my family. And I talked to you a little bit about values. If you're going to be successful as a leader, you need to know who you are. You can't lead others if you can't lead yourself. And you can't lead yourself if you don't know what you stand for. Because your values are what your grounding principles are. When the, to when the times get tough and you have to make a tough decision, your values are what you use as a basis to be able to make that decision. And for me, my values start with my family. I put my family first and foremost. And questions that I ask myself at work, if I'm asked to go to a meeting and my son has a performance, I ask myself, what am I going to remember five years from now? I sure as hell am not going to remember this meeting. But I will regret not spending time with my son at his performance. I will make the right accommodation so the meeting piece is covered, but I'm able to spend time with my family. Um, integrity is key to me. My word is my bond. I say what I'm going to do. I walk the talk. I hold it very dear um, when I commit to something, I'm going to do that. Integrity is really important to me. Uh, Bobby sent me an email back in July to ask me to come speak to this, and I didn't reply to her for four months. I have no excuse. I missed the email. I didn't see it in my inbox. I still feel horrible about that, <laughs> that it didn't get back to her, because it goes back to my values. And then lastly, attitude. I think attitude can make such a huge difference in the workplace today. Colin Powell has a great quote, and the quote is, perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. When you have positive attitude in the workplace and you bring that out, you just make everybody else better around you. Listen, I have my bad days and I get pretty cranky. I'm real, I can get really hangry if I don't have my lunch. I know where my uh, days are where I may have in bad spots where my attitude where not, may not be in the best place, I find ways to do an attitude adjustment or attitude check because I know the team that I'm working with, they feed off my attitude. They feed off my perspective. So attitude is a key part of my value for myself. There's this other concept that I've learned over time called 100% responsibility. And it's very freeing if you can... Uh, be able to do this all the time, but it is extremely difficult. And the 100% responsibility means I'm 100% responsible for reacting to everything in my environment. Everything else, everyone else is 0% responsible. So a real simple thing is my wife did not make me angry. I chose to be angry. Now, I am not very good at this. I'm still practicing it. I am trying to get better at it. But it is a philosophy that I have to keep reminding myself that when things don't go my way, I'm choosing how to react to that in my environment. So if I choose to get angry, I have made that choice. Somebody didn't make that one for me. When you give somebody else the power to make choices for you, then you've lost control of your life. You don't, And that's yours. You've chosen to give that up. Don't ever give that up. That's, that's your responsibility for that. I think what I've heard from talking to some of the students today and spending some time with Bobby, it seems like this university does a great job about getting out and giving back to the community. I didn't do that when I was growing up. I wish I did. But over my time in the Air Force and my time at FedEx, I have really become to believe the importance of being involved and be involved in something. And be involved in something that interests you, that you feel strongly and passionate about. There's no right or wrong uh, organization, but find something that really speaks to you, it speaks to your heart, and then be able to give back. This world will continue to be a better place when we have the um, uh, business leaders like Mike Cottrell, Fred Smith, each and every one of you in the room who make the choice to want to give back to make our communities better. So get involved in something, and it's something that I've taken a, a passion about. And I have, um, I'm involved with three different organizations in Memphis, um, and I love being able to be a part of those, but they all speak to me. I will also tell you this. Don't be involved with more than three boards, nonprofit boards. Because if you're trying to do a job, and then you're trying to work on three other nonprofit groups, and you're trying to raise a family, and by the way, you like to have other activities, you won't be able to have enough time for yourself. So you need to find ways to be able to limit that. 
Next is this equation. I'm a math guy, so I got to have some equations up here. It's a simple one, but it's one that I think is profound. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. I think you can make your own luck. I think you can engineer serendipity, but there are things that you have under control that you can create your own luck. You can create when opportunities present itself, and if you're prepared, you're going to be able to get them. When I became vice president at corporate communications, I don't have a journalism degree. I have a math degree. I have an MBA, and I'd never worked in communications before. But what they said when they applied for the job is they needed a leader for the organization. Well, I said, well, I, I got the leadership piece. I think I'm prepared for that. I spent some time studying about communications, interviewed the job, and got it. And I had some people say, like, you were really lucky. That was just being in the right place at the right time. I was like, well, that may have been some of it. But I worked really hard on the leadership preparation to get ready for the job. Because if I hadn't done that, I would never have been considered for that. I told you I was in the Air Force. I've got to bring a military uh, lesson learned to this too. And that is flexibility is the key to air power. Now, we don't, certainly don't use air power within FedEx Express unless we're moving packages via the plane. But the key part here is to be flexible. I told you earlier when we started, I wanted to fly airplanes in either the Navy or the Air Force, and now I'm in corporate communications. What? How did that happen? I still am trying to figure that out. But the key is you've got to be flexible, and you've got to zig when you need to zag or zag when you need to zig, whatever analogy you want to use. But if you're flexible in what you're trying to get done, the better off you're going to be. If you're very rigid in what you're trying to accomplish, there's a, there's a, a point in time that you want to be uh, purposeful about what you're doing and being goal oriented, but you also need to understand when maybe you need to be flexible and move some things around. Um, you need to manage your brand. I think I showed I showed you earlier about all the accolades that FedEx has received from Forbes and Fortune and Black Enterprise. Those don't just happen; they happen because we have a purposeful plan to be able to receive those kinds of accolades because we have an identity we want to be known for as a company. I also think that people, individuals in the workplace, have their own brand and should be known for something. What do, you want to, what, is your, what do you want to be known for when people mention your name? What are the adjectives that you want them to rattle off? Do, they want to, do you want them to rattle off as dependable, team player, leader, organized, energetic, great to work with? Or do you want them to rattle off difficult to work with, grumpy, not a morning person, you know, what do you want to be known for? And if you, have, you want to be known for X and you're known for Y, then you've got some work to do to be able to manage that. And I think all of us need to take the opportunity to think about what do we want to be known for, what is the brand, and then how we want to manage that. The last two, and then we're going to open up for questions, the six Ps. Has anybody heard of the six Ps before? You ready? Prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. I learned this one in the military from Curtin Alton Whitley, uh, one of my, he was the professor of aerospace science at Clemson University, and he said, Gibson, do you know the six Ps? Because I don't remember what I screwed up on, but it was really bad, and I have never forgotten the six Ps. Um, you may not want to use the one word in there. You can make it five Ps. I think it's more impactful to add the six word, um, but you've got to be a planner. You need to plan. You need to plan your career. You need to plan what you want to do in business. You want to be, be able to plan in life, and when you're able to do that, good things happen. And then finally, never stop learning. If I had decided to quit learning, I would never have been able to get into this corporate communications job and I would never be able to step into social media. I spend time with lots of different team members across FedEx to learn about their job. I spend time with pilots, operators, our meteorologist teams, package handlers, social media experts, digital marketing experts, our IT team. I want to continue to keep learning because those are new skills and I want to continue to remain valuable to the organization. And in order to remain valuable, you've got to continue to bring results. In order to bring results, you've got to bring new perspective and new thinking. And you can't bring that if you don't continuously continue to learn. So that was a lot. Uh, I very much appreciate the attention here in the room and on the simulcast. I just want to finally wrap up with this piece, which at FedEx, our purpose is connecting people and possibilities around the world. We've built a worldwide network that values our people. I talked to you a little bit about our culture, and we're going to continue to grow and evolve, 
And with that commitment, we're going to continue to influence other customers, other consumers, and future team members to want to join FedEx, which is a great organization and a great place to work. I very much appreciate your attention. I hope that this was helpful, and I think we now have some time for some questions, so I'll open it up to the audience and the simulcast for any questions that you guys have. Yes, thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate that. And um, thanks for calling out that I didn't include the word trust on my presentation. Um, I'm just kidding. I know it wasn't the point. I'm just trying to make a joke to, joke to lighten the mood. Um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, trust is an important piece of the business world. I mean, FedEx, we aren't successful if we don't have our trust with our customers. And we have built that trust over 43 years because absolutely positively we're going to deliver it overnight. And if we don't meet our, those expectations to our customers, then we find ways to be able to improve that. So trust, I mean, we all in this, in this room have companies that you can think of right off the top of your head that you like to do business with, right? But I bet you can name even more companies that you don't want to do business with because you've been wronged in some way. And I hope FedEx isn't one of those. If it is, don't tell me. Um, but trust is such a huge part of how business is going to be successful. So you have to have that trust on a business level. But you've got to have that trust in an organization. I mean, in the military, I've got to trust that my buddy has got my back, that he is going to do his part of his job so I can do my part of my job. The same thing works in the business world as well. And that's why I think when you look at values, when you stand up for your values and you live your values, that's how you gain the trust of your team members. When you don't live your values, then other people are not necessarily sure where you stand in the organization, and they don't trust how you're going to react into a situation. So you're absolutely right. Trust is, a, is an underlying foundation to this, and I think it begins from understanding your values and who you are and how you lead. That's how you build trust with others. So thank you very much, Ron. I appreciate that. So we just recently rebranded. So back in August, we made an announcement. We now all have moved to all purple and orange. So back when we acquired Caliber Logistics back in 99 and we launched FedEx Ground in 2001, in order for us to get the name recognition in the marketplace, because we were known as FedEx Express. You ship it overnight. We weren't known as a ground transportation company. We came up with this color scheme to have purple and orange for ground, purple and red for FedEx Freight, and purple and orange for FedEx Express. Over the last 15 years, we have recognized through a lot of research that consumers really resonate and recognize purple and orange as the color and logo for FedEx, regardless if it's FedEx Ground or FedEx Freight or FedEx Office. Um, we've also, when we acquired TNT, which is a company, a ground parcel company out of Europe, funny enough, their orange in their logo is PMS 106, is the same color as our orange in FedEx Express. So with the acquisition of that significant company in Europe, we decided to go completely to purple and orange. So to answer your question, as another point to your question, I have a peer. Her name is Monica Skipper. She's responsible for brand engagement marketing. Her team is responsible for all of the branding across the globe. She and I work really closely together when it comes to reputation management and brand management. Does that help answer your question? It does. I guess I was kind of... So the, per the ground, the FedEx ground business, um, the drivers are independent service providers. So within FedEx ground, there is a, uh, each market has independent service providers who are delivering and picking up packages. So yes, FedEx ground is employing almost 7,000 small businesses on behalf, who work on behalf of FedEx ground. But they're their own independent business, owned, incorporated, um, LLCs and that type of thing. So when we purchased Caliber Logistics in 99, that was the business model that they had put into place, was the independent service provider model. One of the reasons is the difference in labor um, regulation. FedEx Express is regulated by the Rail Railway Labor Act. 
which was done in the 1800s. The Railway Labor Act was initiated in the 1800s by Congress because you had multiple rail lines crossing the country. And what a rail company could do, let's say a rail coming through Dahlonega has five miles of rail, well, that rail line could go on strike. Well, that would cripple commerce for the entire country because no one could use that rail line. So FedEx Express is governed under the Railroad Labor uh, Act. FedEx Ground does not fall under the Railway Labor Act. It falls under the National Relations Labor uh, Act. And because of the differences in the labor pieces, we have chosen to build up our model using independent service providers as opposed to having uh, uh, FedEx Ground employees doing pickup and delivery. So part of it was based on the government regulations, but it was also based on the company that we had acquired back in 99 and how it was already structured. And it's been a very successful uh, model for us. As I said, we employ five to 6,000 small businesses, and those small businesses employ 20 to 30 employees within each one. And in some cases, they're making four to five million a year just as a small business. So they're very successful. It's important. Uh, and it falls in the six P's, I heard somebody say over here. My time in the Air Force uh, ROTC at Clemson was a huge training ground for time management. And when I'm talking to other students or you know high school students going in, I, I encourage them to look at ROTC programs because I think the military aspect along with the civilian aspect of college really helps bring time management together. I think it's one time management is one that has learned over time and you know, your style of time management is gonna be different than mine, um, but it is an important one that I think you need to have. Uh, when I really picked up time management is when I did my executive MBA. So I was working full time and I was getting my MBA. That's when I put time management to the test, um, but it is critically important. And I think what's great here at the University of North Georgia and the core cadets, I think that program is certainly helping out quite a bit. So um, I've got a couple of folks. Um, I start off first and foremost, one of my uh, mentors, uh, and I have not seen him in years, but I remember from my high school days was my high school soccer coach, Coach Baird. Um, he taught me a lot about leadership right out the gate. I was fortunate enough to make the varsity high school soccer team in ninth grade. I was one of only two ninth graders who ever made the team. And so when I made the team, I mean, I thought, <laughs> I was a big man on campus, man. I mean, freshman, I made the varsity team. He pulled me aside and he said, Gibson, you made the varsity team not by what your skill today, but because I see potential. And that taught me a lot about someone who was going to invest in me, but he also put me in my place. And he taught me a lot about leadership. So I look up to Coach Baird. So, I mean, that's a relatively long ago example. Today, um, I've got a mentor at FedEx. His name is Mark Colombo. He's a senior VP. He's promoted me twice in the organization. Um, he's worked in a lot of different industries and businesses. I look up to him, so I've got a mentor or champion um, within the company. And then for me, I, I look to a lot of military leaders. I spent a lot of time reading a, with about Eisenhower and George C. Marshall. Uh, for me, are folks that I look up to in terms of leadership. And then Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I think what he did in his cabinet and what he faced in the Civil War and how he brought such a disparate group of people together to lead this country are folks that I look up to. To your question, the other thing I wanted to say, I think it is important that you have a mentor and you have a champion and they're different. A mentor is somebody that you can go and talk to and they can give you advice and they can give you perspective and then you can bounce some things off of. But when you're in an organization, no matter where you work, you need a champion. That champion is somebody who's willing to put their neck out on the line and speak on behalf of you and vouch for you. I'm very fortunate to have Mark Colombo as a champion of mine. I consider him a champion. I hope he thinks, he thinks as well. But I, I think it's important that you have those wherever you go. You need to have a mentor, but more importantly, you need to have a champion. So thank you for your question. I appreciate that. So um, there's a lot of media that's coming at us today, and I have to read a lot of different newspapers and articles and stories about FedEx. Um, I think today within the media, and if you're thinking about how do you want to um, grow and learn, I don't think you can rely necessarily on one publication. I just had a conversation with a peer of mine in Europe, and he's 
He's like, what's going on with this Trump administration? And I can't sort of, I can't keep up with what's going on. Like, where do you read news from? And I said, well, I don't really have one news source. I mean, I, I try and, and take news in from lots of different or, uh, uh, outlets, so I get a lot of different perspective. And I think that's important when you're thinking about earned media or newspaper. Don't rely necessarily on one source of information. I think you need to look at multiple sources and look at sources that may have disagreeing views from where your views are, but it's important to understand the other, the other perspective. You don't have to agree with it, but I think you need to be able to understand it. So I'm not sure if I'm answering your question directly or not, but when I'm thinking about how I um, consume information, I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting as much of a 360 view as I can. And then when it comes to specifically to marketing, you know, where are those reputable sources on marketing information or marketing perspectives or marketing trends that you want to tap into? It really depends whether it's digital or social or uh, whatever the case may be. I wish when I started at FedEx that I had um, pursued an overseas assignment. Uh, I didn't actively pursue that when I came to the company, and I've had a chance to travel abroad. I was able to travel abroad in the Air Force, uh, and I've been able to travel abroad with the company, but I never had an opportunity to actually go and work in Hong Kong or Singapore or Cologne or Brussels or Paris for a long period of time to be able to really to assimilate in that culture. I wish I would have done that differently, to have had a chance to take an overseas assignment. I wish I would have done that. Excellent. Well, I think we are finished with the questions. Um, Ruben, do I turn it over back over to you? You get the honor of closing this thing out? Oh, and actually, can I do that last bit too, you this sure part? Can. So um, as you are leaving from the registration table, you'll see back, we've got some FedEx Cares water bottles. I've shipped a lot of them here. I know a really good shipping company to ship them back, but I, <laughs> but I would prefer not to ship them back. So please grab some water bottles. I really appreciate your time and attention today. I hope you found this to be uh, beneficial. Before you get up, though, I want to make sure we turn it back over to Ruben. But thank you all very much for your time and attention. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you.